Christopher Smith. Christopher, Smith. you got something? What about Christopher Smith? <laughs> this is bad, yeah. This is real bad. When I forget the name of my office, it's only because I'm thinking about it. So I got, um, <laughs> who is it? I don't know his name. This is what I have. I got Emmett Fitzgerald and Mr. Lisa Duffy. Elise Duffy, Good morning. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Whatever we went through yesterday, day before yesterday, last week, last month, last year, is gone. It's onward. It's onward. God bless you all. Following all the announcements for this week, please check the bulletin for more detailed information. Also, the bulletin is available on our website. The 2024 calendars are available at the Visitor Center. So please take one calendar per family. Barber's Market has moved to its winter location the GADC Healthy Lifestyle Hub has moved to 839 West 79th Street. They will reopen in January. Save these January dates. On January 14th, the King Celebration with guest speaker Mark Lamont Hill will be at the 10 a.m. service. On January 28th, Jonathan Igg, the author of the book, King, A Life, will be at the 10 a.m. service followed by a book signing. The Employment Resource Center is hosting a healthcare hiring event on Thursday, January 11th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. in McMahon Hall. On Wednesday, January 17th, Selah, is hosting a thank you event for their supporters. They will be sharing highlights from their South African trip, and this will take place in McMahon Hall at 7 p.m. Now, as a courtesy to those worshiping around you and in reverence to God, we are requesting that all cell phones be turned off or put on silence at this time. Bring your whole tithe into the storehouse, for that, but we're going to thank him for 75 cents. Seven I just wish to thank those members who uh, 
continue with their sacrificial offering, and they are also requesting that you guys please continue your church attendance. Good morning once again, my brothers and sisters. On behalf of the family of St. Sabina, our anointed senior pastor and spiritual leader, the Reverend Dr. Michael L. Flager, we welcome you. We welcome you to our celebration of praise and thanksgiving. We believe that the power of prayer will strengthen us. The word of life will set us free and the body and blood of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will sustain us on this pilgrim journey. We extend a warm welcome to all of our visitors. If this is your first time worshiping with us, we invite you to fill out both sides of the visitor's card found in the pew and turn it in at the time of offering. Once again, our celebrant is our anointed senior pastor and spiritual leader, the Reverend Dr. Michael L. Flieger. Yeah. yeah. Say it again. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Our ministers of the word are Mrs. Marilyn Hunter and Mrs. Rhonda Travis. Our ministers of music are Mr. Michael Drayton, Mr. Fred Wilson, and the saints, Sabina Levites. Yeah. Hallelujah to God. Our ministers of the altar are Mr. Emmett Fitzgerald and Ms. Elise Duffy and Mr. Christopher Smith, and my name is Samuel Sanders. <laughs> Thank you. My brothers and sisters, the model for both the natural family and the family of God is the holy family. There we find mutuality in relationships. We find compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. In this portrait of the Holy Family, people do not claim privilege. Jesus Christ, who was the Son of God, was cared for and protected by his mother and his father. In the family, we discover that while children are taught and molded by their parents, it is the children themselves that teach the adults what it means to be a parent. In the family, we discover that husbands and wives fashion and shape each other into caring, loving, and forgiving partners. So it is in the family of God that we discover that we are only to do this in trusting, trusting our relationships, that we can live lives of mutuality, respect, and service. When we model ourselves after Jesus Christ, we learn to be compassionate, kind, humble, gentle, and patient, and patient, and patient. In the family of God, we take on the most basic family characteristic. We put on love. My brothers and sisters, please stand now and let us usher in the presence of this great triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost.
price. about the rest of the world, but at St. Sabina, we are celebrating New Year's today. So would you just give God thanks for every blessing, every good thing he's given us in that 2023. Just thank him for all the provisions. Thank him for all the blessings, all the miracles, everything. He, come on, somebody. Thank him for 2023 and what he's done. I want to do one more praise because there may be a few folk in here yes, that are just glad they made it <laughs> with all the hell they went through they just glad I got through it I, I came to the end of this year I made it to a new year would you get praise for just making it through another year come on give God some glory God. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Ah, we thank you, God. We thank you, God, for your goodness and your mercies. But we're here, God, not just to thank you. We're here because we love you. And Lord, we come to worship you because you're God all by yourself. And Lord, in our worship today, we come not just to exalt your name, but in our worship today, I invite everybody in this sanctuary and all those watching in the internet to in our worship today to say to God, God, in 2024, I want to get closer to you. I want to get up in your face, oh God. I want to be in your presence, God. I want to be closer to you than I ever been in my life. I want to revive the fire I had when I first met you. I want to revive that fire when I was thirsty for you, like a deer that panted after water. Lord, I want to get so close to you that I can hear your voice. I know it's your voice when I hear it. I feel your presence when I walk out and when I walk through the world. Lord, I want to get so close to you that I'm always in your presence, God. That's our desire this morning, God. So lift up your hands. And with the desire to be a God chaser, begin to just open your mouth and begin to just worship God. And tell him in your worship, I want to get closer to you, God. I want to get closer to you, God. I want to draw unto you, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to seek your face because you said if I did I'd find you I want to knock on the door because you said you'd open it I need you like never before God come on worshipers come on worshipers come on worshipers I love you God I want to get closer, God. Just to be close to you, God. Just to be close to you, God. Just to be close to you, God. That's all I want. I just want to be close to you, God.
come with just a whispering wind. I want to know it, God. I want to be sensitive when you nudge me, God, and when you direct me.
In this moment of worship, I just ask you all, just take a minute. In the midst of this worship, you can do it out loud. You can do it in the secrets of your heart. But in this presence of God and his holiness, begin to speak and loosen the things you are believing God for for 2024. Speak them either out loud or speak them in your heart right now. Just name them consciously. The things you're putting out there in the atmosphere. Things you're loosening and believing and loosening faith for for 2024. So we can seal them in this worship this morning. Just name them and speak them and Take them from your heart and put them into the atmosphere of faith. You have not because you ask not. Oh, 
a reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 15, verses 1 through 6, 21, verses 1 through 3. The word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am your shield. I will make your reward very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what good will your gifts be to me if I keep on being childless and have as my heir the steward of my house, Eliezer? Abram continued, See, you have given me no offspring, and so one of my servants will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him, No, that one shall not be your heir. Your own issue shall be your heir. The Lord took Abram outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars if you can. Just so, he added, shall your descendants be. Abram put his faith in the Lord, who credited him as an act of righteousness. The Lord took note of Sarah as he had said he would. He did for her as he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore Abraham a son in his old age at the set time that God had stated. Abraham gave the name Isaac to his son of his whom Sarah bore him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response story of my brothers and sisters is from the book of Psalms. 105 verses 1 through 6 and 8 and 9. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Glory to God. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Give thanks to the Lord. Invoke his name. Make known among the nations his deeds. Sing to him, sing his praise, proclaim all his wondrous deeds. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Glory in his holy, holy name. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Look to the Lord in his strength. Constantly seek his face. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. You descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen one, he, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth, his judgments prevail. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. He remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations, which he entered into with Abraham and by his oath to Isaac. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 8, verses 11 through 12, 17 through 19. Brothers and sisters, by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. He went out not knowing where he was to go. By faith, he received power to generate even though he was past the normal age, and Sarah herself was sterile. For he thought that the one who had made the promise was trustworthy. So it was that there came forth from one man 
himself as good as dead, descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sands on the seashore. By faith, Abraham, when put to the test, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises was ready to offer his only son, of whom it was said, through Isaac, descendants shall bear your name. He reasoned that God was able to raise even from the dead, and he received Isaac back as a symbol. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My brothers and sisters, please stand for the gospel. Sisters and brothers, the Lord is with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Dr. Luke, the second chapter, verses 22 through 40. Glory to you, O Lord. When the days were completed for their purification according to the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves and young pigeons, and according with the dictate to the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, whose man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he seen Christ the Lord. He came in the spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into the arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in the sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and glory for the people of Israel. The child's father and the mother were amazed at what was said about him, and Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted, and you yourself a sword will pierce so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel in the tribe of Asher, and she was advanced in years, having lived seven years without her husband after her marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but she worshiped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had filled the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew 
and became strong and filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was on him. When the days were completed for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they took him up and presented him to the Lord. The gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. We live in a world where we are constantly being pulled and tugged by all the things that want to be God to us, by people, by things, by systems, by our jobs, and even sometimes by ourselves. But I read that there's only one God and his name is Jehovah. He is the almighty and the omnipotent. And there's nobody, there's nobody greater than him. Can you just put your hand and say, God, there is nobody greater than you. There is none like you.
a promise there
understand. I made it. I made it. I made it to another year. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That ain't no little thing. <laughs> See, some people understand. You just don't know. Hallelujah. Put your hands together. Put your hands together and thank you. Hallelujah. We say, great big God bless you to all those listening and watching and the internet all around the world today. God bless you. Would you go with me to the book of Joshua? The book of Joshua in the first chapter. I'll be reading from verses 1 through 8. The book of Joshua, the first chapter. Verses 1 through 8. Ooh, there is something in the atmosphere today. There's something in the atmosphere. And I'll tell you, God was preparing the place before we even came. I came in here last night about 9 o'clock. It was all dark. And I just felt his presence when I came in here. I said, Lord, this is so strange. He said, I'm preparing the atmosphere. The book of Joshua, the first chapter, verses 1 through 8. If you got to say praise the Lord, if you haven't got to say wait, is that a wait or? 
you have the NIV version, would you proclaim this loudly with me and let's fill the atmosphere together. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land that I am about to give to them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert of Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, and all the Hittite country to the great sea on the west. No one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. Because as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you or forsake you. So be strong and courageous, a little louder, because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to them, to their forefathers and to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. And do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. I want to speak to you this morning from the title. You ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. Sisters and brothers, it may seem strange to come from the book of Joshua in the Old Covenant in the middle of this season of God's birth and, and in this Christmas atmosphere. But I'm simply following God's lead and his word for this church in this new year of 2024. And the fact is that it really makes sense. Because Christmas is the celebration of the physical birth of Jesus. When the womb could no longer hold the omnipotence and the spirit and the purpose of Jesus. When he had to be born. And that's what I come to declare to you this morning that your purpose, your greatness, and your potential can no longer be held within you. Mm, let me say it again. Your purpose, your greatness, your potential can no longer be held within you. I came to declare to you, get ready to give birth. Get ready to give birth. I came to declare to you that your best days, your glory days are ahead of you. I don't care what you in, what you've been through, how you feel. I said, I come to declare to you that your best days, your glory days are ahead of you. It's time to live your promise now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I see y'all, some of y'all fighting me today. That's okay. The he in me is greater than the he in the world. <laughs> it's time to give life to your promise 
now. Somebody shout now. now. There was a study done of a thousand of some of the largest churches in America asking if they were filled and found and felt they were living God's promises for their lives. Shockingly, a majority, a majority of those answered said that they felt stuck in the wilderness life. They felt like they were out of Egypt, the land of not enough, but they were stuck in the wilderness. They go to church, but they stuck when they're in the streets of life. They said they felt joy in the sanctuary, but stuck when they left it. As we look at the landscape of America, and the world around us, it is not surprising. Thus, I believe that too many have forgot that we are supposed to be going to the promised land. But I want to switch those words so you can get what I'm trying to tell you this morning. We keep talking about going to the promised land. No, I want to tell you it's time to go to the land of your promises. Because when we think of promise land, we think of something with Moses, we think of something of Abraham, we think of something of Joshua. But I'm here to tell you, it is time for us to go to the land of our promises. God has spoken promises over every individual in this sanctuary. And everybody listening on the internet, God has spoken promises to you. And I'm here to tell you today, as we begin 2024, it's time to go to the land of your promises. I come to remind you this morning, for some who may have forgotten, God's got more for you. Hmm. Some of you, that's hard to believe because you've just surrendered to what you were at and where you're at. God has more for you. You ain't seen nothing yet. Also, let me remind you of this, that there's a whole generation that had to die in the wilderness because they weren't ready for the promised land. There was a whole generation of people that had to die in the wilderness because they weren't ready for the land of their promises. Look at somebody next to you. Look them right in the eye. And tell them as strong as you can, I ain't dying in the wilderness. Look, somebody on the other side says, I ain't dying in the wilderness. <laughs> now just put your hand on yourself and say, I ain't dying on the, in the wilderness. <laughs> say, I'm going to the land that God has called me to. Say, I'm getting everything God has for me. <laughs> somebody here this morning or on the internet may be feeling stifled or stuck. Some may feel like giving up or surrendering and waving the flag. But you need to tell the devil right now, you thought you had me, but I'm on my way somewhere. <laughs> You need to tell the devil right now, you thought you had me, but I'm on my way somewhere. Say this after me to the devil. Say, devil, I'm putting in a change of address. I will no longer be living in the house of fear, uncertainty, doubt, or lack. No, say that again, because some of you didn't get that. Say, say, I will no longer be living at the house called fear, uncertainty, doubt, 
or lack because the rent's too high there. The rent's too high there. Say, my new home, my new home is at the corner of destiny and promise. My new home is at the corner of destiny and promise. Somebody shout, I'm getting ready to move. Shout, I'm getting ready to move. I'm getting ready to move. So you got to understand something. I may not look like it right now, <laughs> but the best is ahead of me. Ooh, y'all hired this morning, but that's okay. Cause I'm just speaking this to me. Y'all don't even have to be here today. It's not what I look like right now, but I know that the best is ahead of me and I'm making up my mind today, I ain't dying in the wilderness. See, I'm glad. I'm glad for what God did for me last year. I'm grateful for every blessing God gave us last year. But in 2024, get ready for what's ahead. I'm thankful for what I can look back on, but I'm excited about what I'm looking forward to and what's ahead of me in 2024. And God gives us in this scripture some principles to Joshua and to you and I that we can use to get there. Verse 1 and 2. God tells Joshua and you and I, I understand the challenges you have. I understand. God says, I know what you've been dealing with in 2023. I know the stuff that's in your plate right now. I know the stuff that's on the boardroom of your life right now. But I'm telling you, God says it's time to get up. It's time to wake up. And it's time to move forward to the greater that is ahead of you. God says, I understand. I mean, I know your thoughts before you sink them. I know what you're doing. I know what you've been through. I know what's going on in your life. I know what's, what you're dealing with right now. But I need you to understand that it's time to get up. It is time to rise up. It's time to stand up and declare, I'm going to what's ahead of me. Look at three people around you right now and say, it's time to move forward. 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 The greater is ahead of you. Somebody declare, the greater is ahead of us. Listen to me. Remember where you came from, but don't let your past keep you from your future. Remember, there's some things you had to learn. There's some things God had to teach you. There's some things God had to show you. Remember where you came from. But do not let your past hold you and shackle you from your future. Here's my question to you. Because we're always talking so much about what we're into, what we've been through, what we've gone through and all this stuff. Here's my question to you on this New Year's Day <laughs> at St. Sabina. What are you going to do now? care what you did yesterday, last week, last month, or the last 12 months. I got one question for you. What are you going to do now? Somebody shout now. now. Say it one more time. And say now. now. So 
God is speaking to Joshua and to you and I. Arise, get up, take action. And I'm speaking to you this morning to say to you, get up from the pity party. Get up from the comfort zone. Get up from complacency. Get up from mediocrity. And get up from the victim. Oh, woe is me. You just don't know what I've been through. There's some stuff in 2023 that you had to go over so that you could know you're an overcomer. Some of y'all would have never known you're an overcomer if you didn't go over some stuff. <laughs> Tell somebody next to say, neighbor, I came over some stuff. I am an overcomer. I am an overcomer. <laughs> In fact, there's some stuff. If the person sitting next to you knew that you came over in 2023, they would shout for you right now because there's stuff you came over. You don't even look like what you went through. But you had to go through some stuff and come over some stuff so God would let you know, so you would know, I am, say I am, an overcomer. Run through a whole lot of mess. But the fact that you sit here today is living testimony that you are an overcomer. <laughs> In fact, some of y'all don't, don't know it or don't speak it, but you're, you're, you're miracles. <laughs> Somebody said, I am a miracle. <laughs> I am. A, said some of you know that that feeding of the 5,000, that walking on water, that ain't nothing compared to what God has done for me in 2023. I am an overcomer. There's some stuff you had to go through. So you would know just how powerful you are. I want you also to understand this. Because some of us have been so beaten up and beaten down by life and by people and by stuff. I want you to understand because some of us have such the residue of racism and slavery and, and Jim Crow has so set on somebody that some of y'all think it's for everybody else but you. But I want you to understand today God wants every single one of us to make it. Look down your, look down your pew right now and say, all of us, all of us. He, he wants all of us to make it. He wants all of us to make it. And look what God says in verse 3. Whew. I love verse 3. God says... I will give you every place that you place your foot. I can shout right there and go home. <laughs> God says he's going to give me every place that I put and set my foot. Can I tell you something, St. Tobina, on this first day of the year? It's time to put your foot down. It's time to put your foot down. It's time to put your foot down and claim that job. It's time to put your foot down and claim health. It's time to put your foot down and claim peace that surpasses all understanding. It's time to put your foot down and claim financial abundance. It's time to put your foot down on lack and put it down on financial abundance. It's time for you to put your foot down and claim love. You deserve to be loved. It's time to put your foot down on abuse. And time to put your foot down and say, I will get the treatment that I deserve. It's time to put your foot down and claim peace and joy and what God has for you. Look at three people around you right now and say, put your foot down right now. Put your, put, put, put it down, put it, put it down. In fact, wherever you are, just stamp your foot right now. Just stamp it. Stamp it.
it right now. Say, I'm putting my foot down right now. See, he told us, every place you put your foot, I'll give you. Your problem is you ain't put your foot down no more. You're still towering in crap you shouldn't be tolerating. You are tolerating some people mistreating you that you shouldn't be tolerating. At your job, in your home, in your family. Oh, y'all. <laughs> You're going to have to walk back in your house today and say, listen, I know I left here this morning one way, but I'm coming back home another way. I'm about to put my foot down on some stuff. You ain't treating me like this anymore. You ain't disrespecting me anymore. You ain't going to make me feel like I left. I deserve to be loved. I deserve to be respected. I des Can anybody just shout because you deserve to put your foot down on some stuff? Next, God tells Joshua and us, you're going to have some obstacles in 2024. You're going to have some things to go through. You're going to have some circumstances. You're going to have some challenges. The devil didn't quit. The devil didn't say, oh, I guess they... And go listen to me no more. Walk away. Oh, hell no. But although you have challenges, although you have obstacles, although you have things that will come at you in circumstances, you got to understand nobody, nobody will be able to hold you back or hold you down. Oh, I wish somebody would be saying, I don't know. Am I in the right church today? Could I? I said, nobody will be able to hold you back or hold you down. Talk to me, St. Sabina. I said, nobody, nothing will hold you back or hold you down. Why? Because God says, I will be with you just like I was with Moses. I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. And because I'm with you, nobody can hold you back or hold you down. I will not leave you. The God who made the universe, the God who spat out the seven seas, the God who spoke and it was, the God who can do all things as I am with you. Because I am nobody and nothing can hold you back or hold you down. I come in the name of Jesus to tell you nobody can intimidate you from this day forward. Nobody and nothing can intimidate you from this day forward. Nothing and nobody can make you think your dream and your promises cannot come about because the God who gave you the promise says, I am with you just like I was with Moses. I am who I am. Look at somebody next, next, next to you and say, neighbor, I need you to hear this. Now say it with all kind of strength and say to them, no one and nothing will be able to hold you back or hold you down because God is with you. His name is Emmanuel, God with us. Okay, let me, let me make it real personal for a minute. This sanctuary, 
this Saint Sabina that you are in today was set to close, has had attack after attack, attacks on me because if they can cut the head off, they can go after the body. But nothing could hold us back or hold us down. There is not a church that I know of in America that has all the outreach that we have here at St. Sabina. So while the devil did everything he could to close us, to lock us down, to take us down, look at us now. Look at us now. Now, why do I say that? Listen to me, listen to me. The reason I say that is because you got to understand you are sitting in a miracle. Okay, some of y'all still ain't getting this. Saint Sabina Herman is a miracle. And if you are a joined, signed up member of Saint Sabina, you are called to experience miracles. Somebody got to get this this morning. Talk to me, St. Sabina. You are sitting in a miracle. Therefore, if you have joined this church, you have joined a church whose membership should expect miracles. That's why I keep telling people, it's time to stop being a visitor and sign up so you can receive the expectation of what God has as a member of this church. Every member of this church, shake your hand and say, I'm expecting miracles. Say, I'm a member of a miracle. Say, I'm a member of a miracle. I joined a miracle. So I should expect Another principle. Ah, help me, Holy Ghost. He says, be strong and courageous. Let me say this to you as nicely as I can. In 2024, ain't no room for weakness. Hit that drum one more time because in 2024, ain't no room for scary people. A place of miracles. There's no room for scary people. In fact, you need to bind that word out of your mouth. I'm not saying the word scared anymore. This is not a time for punks. This is a time for warriors. 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 Some folks and some churches have a lot of soldiers. But St. Sabina, we got generals. I said we got generals. 
I say, we got generals. You may not feel like a general, but you better declare right now, in 2024, I'm a general! Because, look what it says here. In verse 6, be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land. Oh my God. Y'all missed that. I told you from day one, I know God has called me to build a church of leaders. See, if you are a member of this church, you are not just called to make it. You are called to lead others to make it. Oh, somebody still didn't get that. For the slow people. If you're a member of this church, you are not just called to make it, but God has called you to lead others to make it. This is a church of leaders. Uh, see, help me, Holy Ghost, because some of them really, really, really slow this morning. So, see, you got to let your family, your friends, your acquaintances, your co workers, your ministry members, some of them that are still just kind of moving. You got to be able to say to them, listen, you're going to make it because I'm taking you with me. <laughs> Grab the arm of somebody next to you right now. Just grab him in the arm and say, neighbor, I need you to understand. I'm going to make it. Now pull their arm a little and say, I'm taking you with me. I'm taking you with me. I'm taking you with me. I'm taking my children with me. I'm taking my marriage with me. I'm taking my co-workers with me. I'm taking the world with me. I'm a leader. I'm a leader. I'm a leader. If you are around me, you going with me. You know how sometimes on TV they say warning? This content may be. Well, let me give you a warning. If you think I was bold or crazy in 2023, you ain't seen nothing yet. I got some emails. And I got some Texas last night and this morning. Because today there's a, they put it in the paper, Corey, in the Sun Times today. I put out something on a Thursday, Friday, whatever it was. Said, I'm speaking to Chicagoans. The things I've been telling you here. We have black and brown fighting over crumbs. Homelessness in our streets, people hungry. So I said, and I put out there, and some, you know, when it gets in the papers, people get, well, who does he think he is? I'm a child of God. I'm a leader. I'm a king's kid. You better, you gonna learn tonight. Or you gonna learn today. So I put out there, if we came up with billions for Ukraine and billions for uh, Israel, Eric, I need you to take this back to your young people, that either this administration and this Congress come up with billions to solve homelessness in America, or we should join together in Chicago and say we will stop the Democratic Convention from coming to this city in August. We will stop it. 
we will stop it. We will stop it. You will not come here and spend millions of dollars eating in fancy restaurants and, and fraternizing with all those who come to pop out you and all that goes on and lobby is taking you here and lobby is taking you. You will not do it in Chicago if you don't come up with the money to deal with homelessness in Chicago. We will stop it. Be strong and be courageous. And everybody shouting with me better be ready to go to the street with me. Because you will not be able to have your 1% parties while the masses are sleeping on the streets. And I'm speaking every faith leader in this city, Christian, Muslim, and Jew, I ask you to join me to tell this president and this, this Congress you come up with the money for homelessness or we'll shut you down. We shut down the Dan Ryan, we can shut down the convention. I was part of the 68 convention out there. I, wa I was beat by the police. I was tear gassed by the police. We were out there stopping their agenda then. And I'm ready to do it again. Then God says to Joshua, don't turn left or right. Being pulled in different directions. He says, don't be distracted. Let me tell you, St. Sabina, the devil and all his two-legged helpers are going to do everything they can. And I know the devil is angry this morning because you came here to hear this. But I want the devil to know I'm not going to be distracted. I am not going to fall for imitation blessings. Let me tell you something. In this time of the year, this is a, t this is a time of the year of scams. People are selling fake Gucci. Okay, you got some, I understand, but I'm still saying. Fake polo, fake heel finger, fake Louis Vuitton, and people are falling for that and buying that and thinking they're getting a discount from this to this, when in fact it's only worth this because it's an imitation, it's a fake. And he's telling Joshua, and he's telling you and I, do not be pulled into fake imitation blessings, fake promises. Don't get distracted by stuff that ain't real. Well, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit just told me, and tell some people, be careful. You don't get involved in some relationships that aren't real. They're deception. 
some of y'all, what you see is not what it is. I don't know who that's for, but that's, that, that just came. So that's for somebody. <laughs> don't, don't get into something that ain't real. You've lived long enough, if you live like me, to know that leather and pleather are two different things. And pleather don't last in the cold. It'll crack on you in a minute and you'll be embarrassed. <laughs> don't get distracted. Look at three people around you and tell them, don't get distracted. Don't get distracted. Don't get distracted. In other words, the way you don't fall into distraction is to live intentionally. Live focused, live intentionally. Keep your eye on the prize. And then he says, don't let this book depart from your mouth. When you press your way through and seek to enter your land of promises, you got to learn how to speak the promises of God over you. Help me, Holy Ghost. You got to learn how to speak to yourself. The Lord is my shepherd. There's nothing I shall want. You got to speak over your body. You got to speak over your children. The devil wants to kill your children. You got to speak over your finances. Speak over your marriage. Speak over your life. The Lord is my shepherd. There's nothing I shall want. And then he says, meditate on it. Day and night. If you want a real good piece of steak. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I just felt that. You got to do like Gibson's does, and they marinate it. They marinate it and age it. So it gets up into the meat. Well, you got to marinate yourself with the word. You got to let it get up inside of you. Just because you can speak it or sing it or shout to it don't mean nothing if it's not up inside of you. Because if you're just speaking it, when you're going through the fire, that speaking will end. But if it's up inside of you, like fire shut up in your bone, it'll come out of you. Meditate on it day and night so that you will be careful, it says, to do. Oh, help me, God. The Bible says, marinate on it, meditate on it day and night so you will be careful to do. It doesn't say so that God will do. Listen to me. Some of y'all wonder why God ain't done something. You're the one that ain't done it. I ain't playing with you. God said, well, you didn't do what you were supposed to do. The Bible says, meditate it on a day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Some of y'all ain't tied nothing, ain't offered nothing, and been obedient in your actions, and been obedient in your marriage, and your, and your children, and your relationships, ain't done your best in your life, and you're looking for God, why aren't you doing something? God says, go read it again. If you do what you're supposed to do, because the word is up inside you, then, then I will do what I am called to do. Stand on the word that he will open doors and make a way. Stand on 
understand the word, that I've been young and I've been old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed begging for bread. Stand on the word, I can do all things through Christ. Stand on the word, no weapon. First time the devil come at you and you, <sighs> shut up. Speak the word inside of you. I'm finished, but I'm going to close saying this to you. I can't speak for you. But I'm doing all I can to challenge you that we could come together in this miracle church where we have miracle members. <laughs> If you're a visitor, this is time for you to get up off it. Because this is the time to join so the miracles begin to fall. When you go every place you look. I don't know about you, but I'm standing on the word for 2024. Here's what I'm standing on for 2024. And this is what God spoke to me. I'm not waiting to see the promises in my life till I get to heaven. I believe that we can see heaven on earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Where? 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 I'm believing for 2024. I'm standing on the promise that I will see my promises in the land of the living. I'm standing in the name of Jesus to declare to you we can have peace here. We can have abundance here. We can have brotherhood and sisterhood. Where? I can't hear you. Where? Where? We can have justice. We can have righteousness. We can have love. Stop thinking. The only place you can have peace and justice and love is in heaven. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Heaven came to earth so that we can begin to experience heaven here. Somebody shout here. Somebody shout here again. Somebody shout here one more time. As we cross the threshold into this new year, I charge and declare to you to proclaim my time of wilderness is over. All right, for me and the five people that are going with me, let me say it one more time for those that didn't understand I'm talking to you. I charge you to proclaim my time of wilderness is over. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I am not getting stuck in the wilderness. My time for the wilderness is over. Now say this with me. I believe as I cross over into 2024, God has more for me today. in this land. Say, I am getting ready to enter the promises of God for me.
me real quick for the for the clicky church people. I believe there's more in 24. I believe there's more in 24. I believe there's more in 24. Now, if you're going with me, because I'm going with or without you. But if you're going with me, you ain't seen nothing yet. States, bring your whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have room enough for it. May the Lord bless our tithes and offerings in the ministries of the faith community of St. Sabina. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Glory to God. Now, there are four options available for putting in your offering, so please choose the one that is most comfortable for you. You can come up and drop your offering in the baskets. Please follow the directions of the ushers by coming up the center aisle and returning by the side aisles or you can mail it in, or you can text GIVE, that's G-I-V-E, to 773-295-2166. That's text GIVE, that's G-I-V-E, to 773-295-2166. Or you can, on our website, click on Donate, online that's donate online the mail-in text to give and website options are available to all those watching our live stream the text to give number is on your screen and we humbly thank you
on my good He's intentional Never failing And then all things are working for my good He's intentional Everybody Never. Says, oh,
The Lord is with you. Let us lift up our heads. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, it is our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks through your son, Jesus. He is the word through whom you made the universe. The Savior you sent to redeem us. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. And for our sake, he opened his arms on the cross and put an end to death and revealed to us the resurrection and won for you a holy people. And so now we join with believers across the world as we come here to proclaim your glory and your goodness as we sing.
Lord, you are holy indeed and the source of all holiness. Make holy then these our gifts of bread and wine, and through your spirit may they become for us the body and the blood of Christ. For we remember how before he went to Calvary to pay the price of our salvation, he invited us to table and there took bread and broke it and blessed it and gave thanks to you, God, our Father, and gave the bread to us and said, take this, all of you, and eat this, for this is my body, which is given up for you. And then he took the cup of wine and again, Father gave you thanks and praise and blessed the cup and gave it to us and said, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and the lasting covenant which is shed for you and for all people that sins may be forgiven. Do this and remember me. And so far we declare this memorial of his death and resurrection and offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation. And pray that as we become one with the bread and with the cup, we might become one with you, Lord, and one with each other. Remember, Lord, believers throughout the world. Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, and all of us who've been called to proclaim your word unashamedly and unapologetically. Remember us, the God, who gather here and have been called to continue to walk this pilgrim journey. May we hear your words that you spoke to be strong and to be courageous. May we indeed refuse to live in a place of fear or doubt or question. But may we live understanding that you have called us to the more. But it is up to each and every one of us to walk into it. May we understand, God, that you won't force us into your blessings. But you have invited us. And it is now we who must meditate on your word day and night. It is we who must pray and worship. It is we who must present our bodies as a living sacrifice. But you promised us wherever we set our foot down, you would give us. And so we make this prayer today, not in our name, but we pray in the name of he who can do all things. For it is through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. So now we pray together as Jesus has taught us, as we proclaim, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And you lead us not into temptation, but you will deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. And the peace who is Jesus be with you. And now let us turn to one another and wish God's peace and his love.
And John looked across the horizon and said, Behold the Lamb of God, Jesus. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who come to his table, and blessed are we who walk into our promises. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Once again, my brothers and sisters, if you feel comfortable, we ask you to please follow the directions of the ushers as you come forward to receive communion, and please notify the ushers if you are not physically able to come forward for communion, and we will send someone to you. Thank you.
Yes, Lord. Quickly, as we get ready to walk into this new land of promises. First of all, where's uh, Sharice Vassar? Where are you at? Sharice? Okay, oh. Uh, she had her birthday yesterday and her, her family's with her, but where's your grandma? Grandma? She's 101 years old. Hey, Grandma, happy birthday. And happy birthday, Cherie. 101. Oh, Jesus. God, you wouldn't do that to me, would you? You wouldn't do that to me. Not 101. Oh, wow. And I am the chairperson of your 100th birthday party. You know that. Okay. Um, Coming up in January are two Dr. King events. January 14th, Dr. Lamont, Mark Lamont Hill will be back with us again on the 14th. And January 28th, um, guest speaker and author and biographer, uh, Jonathan Eagle, who just wrote the book, King A Life. An amazing, amazing book. And that day we will be giving out 250 free books. Uh, of his book that day. Uh, Sela is hosting a thank you party uh, for their support on Wednesday, January 17th at 7 p.m. Uh, VRC Healthcare Career Day and Resource Fair Thursday, January 11th uh, from 10 until 2 in McMahon Hall. Um, on Christmas Day, and I thank you, we had more volunteers this year than we've ever had. So thank you. We had so many volunteers. So you know, on Christmas Day, thanks to you, um, we gave out 1,600 meals, toys, and $100 gift cards to all the mothers in the shelters. We went to nine shelters, two veterans homes, and we distributed meals to the people living on the streets at Canal Port, uh, under the bridges, uh, Lower Wacker, and one person even drove up and down State Street downtown to all the people on the corners and gave out meals to them, as well as we sent 50 meals over to the six district police officers and thanking them for their service to us. So thank you to all the volunteers. We appreciate you. Um, it is not too late to get in your Christmas offering if you've not done it yet. We will make an exception for you. But you might want to do it today because for tax purposes, this is for, for the world, it's the last day of um, 2023. For us, we're already in 2024, so we moved on. There are calendars. Um, in the back, uh, one per family into visitor's booth, calendars for everybody uh, for 2024 to pick up for your home and for your family. I know there's a number of people who are here this morning that I don't usually see. Um, and welcome, we miss you. And I hope for all of us that in 2024, we're gonna be consistent with our attendance every Sunday. Don't miss what we got for you and what God has for you in 2024. So welcome back if you come back and uh, let's all be consistent in 2024. The last thing I wanna say is this, um, and I just because I feel like I need to share this. First of all, I want all the, all the armor bearers, did you come out front a minute? All the armor bearers. And I know some are not here, some are out of town, and the juniors too. The juniors that are here and the I'm embarrassed that I hear. Um, is somebody still coming? Come on, Donnie, you know you. Well, I'm glad I didn't need you in an emergency, Jesus. <laughs> I'm gonna say this to them, but I'm gonna say this to you. Because one of the things we're gonna do 
in the next couple of weeks, and I'd say to a few fillers ahead of them, is I want to go some to some training. And I've already asked uh, from the FOI to come over and to do some training because I, I, I know, and God has shown me already, that I know we are under attack. I'm under attack. Um, in the last three weeks, um, I've been sick. One time I had to go to the emergency room last week. Uh, my nephew had to call 911 to come to the rectory for me. I know the enemy, and I know it's just an enemy attack. But it's showing me what's coming in the natural. I've received so much hate lately. Even yesterday in Walgreens, a man says to me, we were hoping, because he said he had, I read what you put in the Sun Times. He said, I, I need you to understand. He said, we thought the Cardinal would get rid of you. But he didn't, but I guess we will. Um, I had two people leave this church in the last two weeks because of an article in the Sun Times um, a week ago because of my beliefs and my stance. But I am not compromising the gospel and what God has called me to do. But I need you all to understand, I need you to be the men I need you to be, and you're great, I love you all, you, you're so committed. But I also know that we gotta be ready in the natural as well as the spiritual. And I know that the enemy is gonna to continue to come. Um, and he, I know he's gonna to try to take me out again. Um, and I know that's what the physical was, because when the doctor in the hospital said, oh, you had a severe flu. When the ambulance came the other day, all my vitals were good, but I couldn't move. I literally could not move. I was stuck. All I could do was throw up. But I knew it was a spiritual thing. And that's why I wasn't so worried in the natural at that point, but I knew it was a spiritual thing. But I know an attack has been let loose coming into this year, because the devil knows just like, I know what God has called me to do and called this church to do. So we're gonna go through some training um, and get ready. I need you all to be the men I need you to be coming up. So let the enemy know he's come through me, he's gotta come through you. And we're gonna be in it together, amen? Amen. amen? amen. So I salute you, gentlemen. And I appreciate it. Let's get trained, let's get ready. The Bible says if you know the thief is coming, you lock the doors. And we're gonna get ready because I ain't going out like that. I ain't going out like that. The enemy can come any way he wants, but I am not compromising my beliefs. And like I said, coming up, coming up, this one of the brothers from Venezuela gave me this. He came, he, he wore this for strength in God from Venezuela to here. Came through hundreds of miles. Well, he right over there. Where you? Brother, come here. Come here. He said, I want you to have it. I said, no, this got you all the way from Venezuela. He said, no, I want you to have it because, come here. And I thank you. And I take this with great, great pride for what you did to me, okay? Yeah. I love that. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. I wear with pride. It got you from Venezuela? Yeah. It's going to get me through hell. <laughs> <laughs> So, but I am not, um, and I don't, say, I don't say any of that lightly or to, to, to scare anybody, because I ain't scared at all. But I want you to understand, when I preach to you about there's gonna be obstacles, but nothing can hold us back or hold us down, because God said he's with us, I mean that. I ain't just telling you something to give you a word, I'm telling you what I know. And I intend to be bolder and crazier than you've ever seen me in this life. So, put on the whole armor, because we're going to war. Amen? We're going to war. Let's stand and pray.
Lord, we receive your call that this is a Joshua church. And you are telling us this day to get up and arise and go forward, to move into the land of promises to which you've called every single person in this life, the promises you have on every individual life and the promise you have on the faith community of St. Sabina. And so, Lord, we get up and we walk with you knowing, knowing, God, that nothing can hold us back or hold us down because God is with us. And as God is with us, we shall fear nobody or no person or no thing. So we are ready, God, to see the more that you have for us this year. We don't intend to leave anything on the floor of our life. Whatever you spoke, it shall come to pass. And heaven yes, is getting ready to be witnessed by us. This is a church of miracles. And these are members who expect miracles. In Jesus' name. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God watch over us and bless us in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And remember, in all you do, in all you say, and all you are, may God be, may the body of Christ be, and may Satan continue to be. Be blessed and be a blessing. And St. Sabina, Happy New Year! Yeah.